Okay, so apologies about that. And apologies to whoever is looking at the recordings and wondering why there is a humongous chunk missing. Uh, so at this point, um, we had just discussed, I'll go ahead and share my screen again here. So we just discussed how we are going to get an item from the game. Uh, and to start off, I made this variable player it equals undefined, all lowercase. Uh, basically creating a variable, not making a new object to put into it yet. The next step is to get something from the game. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to get the player that I put in earlier. So I'm going to go down to create game, which is where all of our one-time code happens. And this could be after the enable physics. It could be before enable physics. It does very importantly need to be after we load the scene. Why does that have to be? Because before that, Priya doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. The player hasn't been added to the game yet, so I'm not going to be able to get it from the game yet. Uh, so in order to get it, I am going to say player is equal to, and I'm going to call another action that we get from the game class, and this action returns a value to us. I'm going to call find item 2D by name. And I'm going to pass it the name for my player. In my case, I renamed my player character to be player in the properties. If you did not do that, you need to put in whatever the name of that character is in your scene file. Now, from here, now that we actually have our player, and by the way, if I'm going too fast at any point, let me know. Yeah, can you re repeat that line of code? And I guess, where sure. are you putting that real quick? So, I have placed in my create game, uh, mm -hmm. after I've loaded the scene, I have put in player equals find item 2D by name, and I've given it the name of the player character that I set in my properties in my scene file. Um, and item 2D, the, the, the D in uh, 2D is capitalized once again. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Once I have that, I can actually start changing it in some way. So uh, in order to make it start responding to input, we're going to need to get input set up inside of our uh, game here. So uh, uh, one moment yes. before we do that. How do we check that the player object is actually populated? Is, is there a way to ah, check that first? That's a great question. So strictly speaking, we haven't used conditionals yet, but we're going to be in the session anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to do if player is equal to undefined. I can output some code here. I can do something. Let me go ahead and highlight that whole line. So if statements in quorum are just the word if, and then whatever condition you have, you can put parentheses around it if you want to, but they're not necessary, unlike something like Java, where it'll complain at you if you don't. Um, equality testing is just a single equals in quorum. It's not like the double equals or like the triple equals you find in JavaScript um, or any of the insane things that you find in PHP. Um, We can check here, if the player equals undefined, that means that it did not find it, right? The, the value that was returned from the function was the, the nothing value. There was no object that we found. It was null. Um, and so we could output something here. We could uh, throw an error using uh, alert if we wanted to. Um, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and I am just going to put, I'm going to just go ahead and put an output statement. So in my case, I'm just putting some code that this isn't going to crash my application or anything, although there's a very good chance that with the stuff we're going to do that it will crash later if this does not get found, right? Because we're going to start doing some things to manipulate to change it. And if that value is null, it's undefined, and we tell it, hey, take this undefined value and like set its speed or something or start moving it, it's, it's going to explode. 
um, the entire computer will just go up in flames. Um, maybe not quite that bad, but it's a totally uh, fair request that we should be checking to make sure that we actually found this thing. So, uh, does that answer your question for now? Yep, okay. and I get nothing in the console, which means my player has been found. Okay, Yay. good. We could also, if we wanted to, we could also put an else statement here. And so my code now looks like... I don't have anything between my else and end right now, but I can put something in here, just output something else, just to let me know that I did find it. So right now in my code, I have if player equals undefined, output player not found, else output player found, end. And that, I should expect that if I go and run this now, let's, let's actually go do that, make sure that I've got my code correct. Move this out of the way. And I see that player was found, so I did find my object as well. From here, let's go ahead and start actually responding to uh, the keyboard. To, to start off with. We could do many different kinds of input. You could be doing mouse input, you'd be doing keyboard input. If you're doing something on a mobile device, you'd be responding to touch. You'd be doing different kinds of things with the mouse, like dragging or dropping or like moving the, the mouse over an area. Um, to start off with, let's just go ahead and do keyboard support. And in order to do that, the there are a few different ways to handle the keyboard. And for those of you who are Epic veterans, you probably remember a bunch of these because we've gone over them uh, before. Um, this includes, um, actually, why, why don't I ask you guys, what kinds of things could we do in order to get the keyboard input from the game and do something with it? We can use the input polling or keyboard handling. You know, input yep. polling that you set up in the update. Um, now, but keyboard poll, you know, keyboard handling. You're gonna use the. We're gonna use the keyboard listener. Yep. So those are the the two main ways that we usually go through it, and I usually recommend using uh, keyboard events and the keyboard listener. Uh, using polling is fine too, but um, there are different ways of using them that I find to be more convenient when you're using uh, different kinds of stuff. So using the input polling is easy for something quick and dirty, where it's just like, I really just want to know if a certain key is pressed on this frame of animation. On every single frame of animation, just check to see, is the space bar held down? If it is, go do something. And that can be convenient for certain kinds of stuff, but it's also, if you have a complex game, it gets bloated pretty fast, because you're already going to be doing quite a bit of stuff in that update. It also does mean that you're doing extra work, which it's not that expensive to go do that in the update, so you're probably not going to see a performance hit. But clean code is easier for us, the programmer, sometimes. Uh, I'm going to pass over the input polling stuff for right now, but if you guys are interested in it, I'm happy to talk about it with you guys. For right now, though, let's talk about keyboard listeners and keyboard events. Uh, in order to use the functionality of a keyboard listener, I need to have a class that is a keyboard listener. And I could make a brand new keyboard listener that is responsible for some of this stuff. Uh, or what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the multiple inheritance that we have, uh, we have deduced that we have. Uh, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to make our main class not just a game, but I am going to add on to the end of it, comma, comma, keyboard listener. You'll see that I have just a whole bunch of green lines here because uh, I don't have my uh, use statement for keyboard listener yet, and the fact that everything is green underlined right now is a bug, but uh, because the main class is acting in a little bit of a funky way here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press Alt-Enter. And so at this point, this is what my code looks like. Class main is game, comma, space, keyboard listener. So I am telling the game engine, that, or I'm telling Quorum, that main is both a game and it is a keyboard listener. And we are going to use this in order to uh, perform the responsive uh, input handling that we're going to be doing. Um, if Alt-Enter is not working for you, the use statement for keyboard listener, Is your screen reader reading right now? Yes, it is. Am I not? Uh, oh, it's not. Audio? It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not uh, putting out. Audio. Meeting controls window. 
Okay, thank you for calling me on that. Quorum Studio 2. Use libraries.interface.events.keyboard listener okay. selected. Does that work incorrectly? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, so if everyone has their uh, new inheritance structure plugged in and has their use statement plugged in. You need a comma after game? Yes, it's okay. game, comma, keyboard listener. Got it. Game, comma, space, keyboard listener. It should be explicit. Tyler Linder has left the meeting alert. Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and plug in our actual functionality to start doing stuff when we press these keys. Similar to how we were handling it with uh, the like create game and the update, we're going to be making use of an inherited action here, and we're actually going to override this action in order to get the functionality that we want. There's a couple of different ways that you could do the input, but this is one of the simplest. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to hold on moving. one sec. Yes. Uh, I still don't have the keyboard listener thing. Okay. Uh, I'm entering it. My use. I, I'll go ahead. I'll post this in the Zoom chat. Start Zoom one. Tasks meeting controls. Tasks with remote me menu. Taskbar. From me to everyone. You Here is the use statement. It is use libraries .interface .events .keyboard listener. Capital K, capital L. Aha, uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay, good. So at this point, let's make a new action which is going to override our inherited class stuff. So that we can use the keyboard. So, Quorum to minimize move close meeting controls window. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm first. This is not something you guys need to do, but that I need to do. I need to get rid of all these random like variables. This integer number text boolean that I made in my code. Quorum Studio 2.0.1 window. And and uh, so line feed and. You don't need to do anything about that. I just wanted to remove that because it was bugging me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a new action here. And we are gonna end up needing another class for this. Um, it's going to be action. Space. What we use to declare functions inside of uh, Quorum. Action. P press e key. F e k e y. Left paren. And it takes a keyboard event. K e y r d e v e n space. In my example, I'm going to name my event, but this is a parameter. You can name it anything you want. E v e n t right paren. D. So my completed code for this action. And I t I selected. A. Action press key. Action press key. Keyboard event event and selected. Lead code looks like action, press key, keyboard event, event, uh, left paren, right paren around the keyboard event and event. So action, press key, left paren, keyboard event, event, right paren, end. And then I'm going to put my code inside. The keyboard event currently is another standard library class that we don't have a use statement for yet. Um, if we go to the event. Blank, action, press key, line, T. You should be able to uh, open the context menu. Pop up menu, menu alt. And even if the hotkey is not working, there should be in the context menu uh, add use for. Cut two of it. Oh, weird. I can't stop voicing when I navigate onto that. Uh, I'm. Oh, that's strange. Maybe you do need to. <laughs> the, the, key, the, the context menu will work, but I would be wary of anything that the keyboard or the screen reader is not telling me what I'm doing. So. It might still end up having to manually enter it. That's very strange, though. On um, Mac, for library, go tabs, tab control. Make you can even sorry. have that first add option on Mac. Oh, interesting. Hmm. There might be something messed up with the editor hints there. I'll make sure Stefik knows, and we'll see about. Uh, so, on Windows, I've got it. But the interesting part was, so when I wrote action. Um, I'll tell you what I wrote. Action pressed key, P R E double -S, S E D K E Y, P yep. capital K capital, yep. keyboard event. So again, K capital E capital. Yep. It did not complain. Uh, and I put, I pressed the space bar and I wrote E V T sure. as the parameter name. That is when it gave me a spelling error. And then I hit 
shift F10 and I found uh, that I had an option to add a U statement. And after that, when I ran over EVT character by character, it did not give me any error. Interesting. And so, mine, mine just added the option and worked. <laughs> okay, yeah. so apparently if we complain at the system enough, it will take pity on us. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I think I'm having a... I think I'm having a screen reader error because it's not giving me that. That hasn't been giving me that spelling error. Um, oh, you haven't been getting spelling errors when you move. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't I give didn't me a get spelling it. error. It just told me that I could add the uh, add the U statement at the top. Huh. Interesting. So at this point. Um, have, has everyone put in this action and ha do they have the use statement or do you guys, uh, I've gotten a bunch of different information from different angles here. Who, who needs uh, the, the use statement so they can put it in manually? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so the use statement for this, this uses the same path as the keyboard listener, it's in the same package. This is... Use libraries.interface.events.keyboard event selected. Use libraries.interface.events.keyboardevent. Libraries.interface.events.keyboardlistener. Keyboard event. Or keyboard event. Yeah, sorry. Keyboard event. Yep. Okay. So from here, we can start plugging in uh, code into this press key uh, action. And this is going to let us start moving the character around. There's a bunch of different ways that we can actually make our character move, but before we make the character move at all, we need to get the conditional set up. So I assume that in my top-down game, I want to let the player move in four different directions. Uh, pardon. Uh, four different directions. I want to move on left, right, up, and down, the cardinal directions. We can use a bunch of different keys for this. We can use basically any keys we want on the keyboard. Um, Common ones are WASD, especially if you're doing uh, anything that's um, particularly like um, complicated where you need lots of keys. It's pretty common to use uh, the, the WASD keys so that you can use some of the surrounding keys for other stuff. Um, one shortcoming is, and actually I don't know, maybe you guys have an idea better than I do about this. If I ever do that and I have the screen reader on, it's annoying constantly having the screen reader tell me that I'm pressing W, A, S, and D. And I don't know if there's a way to get it to stop telling me that when I'm doing a game like that. What you should do in that case is firstly, ensure that your game has a separate title. Sure. Secondly, uh, set up a configuration profile. And thirdly, disable key echo. Interesting, okay, I should look into that actually. I, I have some knowledge in screen readers as I, I need to have some in order to work with them, but I'm definitely not uh, as well versed as you guys are. So that's good to know. Uh, well, why not the arrow keys? It's that's, completely not that's what I was going to move to next is the easier thing to do would just be use the arrow keys, right? So let's say that we're going to use the arrow keys for our movement, unless you guys would like to use something else, in which case you can. Actually, I actually have a question. Yes. Uh, is are you guys handling a an issue with JAWS using the arrow keys? Um, I don't know if you guys have encountered this. I'm assuming so. Uh, any games I've ever built um, using JAWS, uh, JAWS has a tendency to be very uh, pushy about grabbing those keys yeah. before anything else. <laughs> Um, do you guys have like a keyboard hook uh, that's going on? Uh, we don't currently. And this is probably why we recommend uh, NVDA primarily for our stuff is just because we've had more time to test and deal with some of the nuances of NVDA and we haven't hit a bunch gotcha. of the nuances in JAWS yet. Gotcha. So, but okay. that's legitimate. And I, I recall at a previous Epic, one of our uh, participants, um, Cena, uh, if you remember him being mentioned by yeah. Stepic, yeah. Uh, he was commenting on a bunch of that as well. So <laughs> it's definitely something we're aware of, but not something we've been able to fix yet. Gotcha. Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and start adding some code to our press key action. Um, Use libraries.interface. This is going to uh, look a lot like what we just did to check to see if we had defined our player, our player character, if that value that was getting returned from the find item call 
was actually there. So we're going to use an if statement. So if space event colon colon and we're going to get a value out of the event here. Space. Uh, in this case, what we want is we want the event uh, key code. K E Y C O D E space. Uh, I think it's key code or is it key? It's been a little while since I touched this. I should. Key code sounds like. I think it's key code. <laughs> I'm second guessing myself here. Uh, okay. If the event key code equals some value. So let's suppose that we want to start with the left arrow. You could use other values too. If you wanted something like the uh, the was keys, those would uh, be in here as well. If the event key code equals, equals e -V -E -F -T event colon, colon left, all caps, if this is a constant value, we are going to do something. And then I'm just put an end on this. D blank. So the completed line of code if event looks key like space. I, if event key code equals event left selected. If event colon key code capital C. New notification from Slack. Event colon left all capital. We're going to do something. The reason why it has this particular uh, uh, capitalization, by the way, is because we are getting. Uh, key code, which is just a variable inside of events. It's a public field. Um, it is capitalized in the same way that we capitalize most of our variables. Um, left is a constant value, so it's all caps, as you would do in uh, typically Java or something like that. Uh, if we have the left key hooked up, we are going to do something to move our character. Um, auto complete code completion is failing here, too. Yeah, I just noticed that, which, yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. All right, well, just flagging yeah. it. Th thank you for letting me know. Uh, I, I don't need to dismiss your, your, uh, your claim. Um, this is strange. Yeah, code completion is definitely working better than it did in 1.0, but uh, that's not a high bar. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're gonna keep working on it because we, we use the code completion all the time ourselves, so. Uh, so if we have pressed the left arrow key, which is this left value, uh, we're going to do something. If we wanted to do something else, like the A key, it would just be event colon A. If we wanted to do something like the enter key, it would be enter. Uh, if you ever want to see what all of the values are, you can also go to the website and look at the reference material for keyboard event. Keyboard event has all of these constants listed on its reference page. Um, Let's go ahead and actually move the character. And we'll worry about all of the other directions after this. But let's start by just seeing that this one is working correctly, right? Line feed blank. I'm going to go to the line in between the if and the end. And let's add some codes to make the player character move. So the easiest thing I can do, and also very naive, and I'm going to tell you outright that I am purposely setting us up for failure so that we can go fix it in step two. Um, the easiest thing I could do is I could take my player, -R. player colon, C1 integer 1 of 338. Okay, completions popped up for that one. Uh, I'm going to say move x. M, move, 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 vector, move, move x, number x amount, 3 of 5. For that one. Code tabs, tab control, left paren. And I am going to give it some pixel value. I'm going to say negative 50. Zero, right paren. With this code, the way that I have set it up right now, if I press the left arrow key, new notification game, from Slack. New. Uh, I am going to take the the character or the player, and it will just move fifty pixels over to the left. Right. It will move negative fifty units along the x-axis, which goes from left to right. So it will move fifty units to the left. Um, there are problems with this, and we're going to see the problems with this. Uh, does, does anyone want to speculate on what they are before we run this code? The character is going to be flashing across the screen to those of us. That is totally true. It is going to be flashing across the screen. It will not be smooth movement. There are other issues as well, though. And then it'll just move off the screen? It can move off the screen, sure. Uh, why, why can it move off the screen? I mean, if it's negative 50, uh, isn't our uh, game window only like 32 by 32 or something uh, like Each square of the grid is 32 by 32. Uh, but oh. the, the window itself, by default, assuming you haven't changed the screen size, is 800 pixels wide. Oh. But 
it is actually true. We can move off the left side of the screen. Even in my game where I made this island, where I, I just surrounded it in the water, my character will actually move off the screen if I press left enough times on that. But why? Because it's skipping pixels. It's just jumping across. Basically it is skipping pixels. And really importantly, because I'm telling it to just move certain number of pixels, we're not using physics to move this thing. So it's going to totally ignore the physics properties of the things it's moving through. Because I told it explicitly, move this many pixels. I don't care how you get there, just do it. And so it's going to, it's just going to run right through. And so uh, before I run this, I actually just realized I got excited and I, I uh, forgot one extra step that we need to do before the, the keyboard will actually work here. Um, so before I run this, there's one extra line of code we need. In the create game, I'm gonna do this right after enable physics 2D. It doesn't strictly need to be here, but it does need to be in the create game somewhere. I'm going to add one extra line of code. Add K -D. keyboard listener. K -E -B -O -D -F -F -T -E -R. Left paren. Left paren, and I'm going to pass me. F -E. Right paren. This code is kind of magic. Here's what it looks like. Add keyboard listener. Me. Selected. Add keyboard listener. Col uh, right. Sorry. Add keyboard listener. Left paren. Me. Right paren. Does anyone want to guess what? me means in quorum it's it's the well this concept in java i would assume yeah it's the, exactly the it's exactly that the this yeah. in java it is a reference to the the object you're currently in it's a reference to the main class this class object that is being used what we are doing in this code is we are telling the game which we inherit from hey i have a keyboard listener that needs to receive events from you the game it is this keyboard listener that I have, which just happens to also be you, right? These two different classes need to talk to each other, and this is how we let them talk to each other. The game class needs to know that the keyboard listener class needs to receive events, and they happen to be the same object in this case, but it doesn't actually matter the, the engine that they are, right? I realize that what I've just said is like kind of nonsense. Does that sort of make sense to, to people, what I just said? Well, so it has to have like its own internal dialogue with itself. Yeah. If you don't exactly understand this line of code, it's kind of okay. This is not something that's going to come up repeatedly through the course of the game. It's sort of, it's, it, if this is just like black magic that you put in and that makes the thing work, that's kind of an okay starting place. You don't need to understand exactly what this is doing and understand everything else we're about to go into next. So at this point, I have all this code. I'm going to line feed at keyboard and, listener me unselected. I'm going to go ahead and run this code. Build successful in zero PPIQ game window. If I press my left arrow, my character has jumped to the left on the screen exactly as you guys said it would. And if I keep pressing it, oh. I have actually just jumped through the water, which should have stopped me because I am a physics enabled object. They are physics enabled objects. I should have run into them. I should have stopped. But because we use this move X, or if we use the, the, the raw setting commands like set X or set Y or set position, these things ignore the physics. So this isn't how we want to handle our movement for this. So that takes us to how can we move it to respect these objects? That comes down to our different physics properties. There's a few different ways that we can move things using physics. In particular, we have uh, linear and angular velocity, we have force, and we have torque. These are all kind of just physics terms, but let's just sort of step through what they are. Quorum. Let's start by saying, suppose I wanted to just apply force when I press the left arrow. What would happen if I applied force to the player? Player would force to the player <laughs> without, without vector? So, yeah, we are going to need a vector. So actually, before I even ask what will happen, let me give you exact code and we'll, we'll talk about what it should do. So I'm going to start by, at the top of my press key, I'm going to make a vector2 object. V -E -C -T -O -R -2 -V -E -C -T -R. I have made the, this code. Vector2 vector selected. Vector2, I, it's just a variable. I named it vector. Because we haven't put the equals on the find or anything on it, we're making a new object. It will just make a vector for us. Similar to before, there is 
no use statement for this right now. I'm going to go ahead and add that. Spelling error. Line feed. Vector to vector unselected. I'm going to use alt to enter. Theoretically, it will work. And if it doesn't, the use statement for this looks like. Use libraries.compute.vector2 selected. Use libraries.compute.vector2. So the data type is vector2 or vector2d? Yes. Vector2. And okay. there's a really good reason for this. The vector2 uh, from the compute package is something that is purely mathematical. And we use it for the game engine, but it's not strictly necessary that we do. And in fact, you could use a vector2 as part of the 3D components in the engine as well. The only thing that's special about a vector2 is that it is a container that describes uh, a direction or some kind of uh, force which has an X component and a Y component. So it's a 2D matrix. Uh, it's not a 2D matrix, it's a 2D vector, but it's like a two by one right. matrix or a one by two, uh, whatever. Okay. It's a, it, it is a, uh, depending on the context in which you're using it, it's either a uh, row major or column major, but it's, it's, like, it's, it's two values in a matrix, right? Okay, so you have an X and a Y value. I have an X and a Y, yep. Okay. The reason why we need this is because physics uses these vectors very heavily. And so all of the functions that allow us to apply physics use these vectors. In this case, it's basically just gonna be an extra level of abstraction between us and passing it in the parameter. And it's kind of just gonna be a nuisance and we don't really like, it won't be obvious to us while we're writing this code why the vector is really important, but the physics system will make use of it behind the scenes in a way that's useful to it. Uh, so we're gonna take this code. Use libraries.compute.vector2 unselected. Vector2 vector selected. Vector2 vector, I've made this. I'm now going to give it some values inside of the if statement. So inside. If event key code equals event left, vector2 vector unselected. Inside this if event key code equals event left, I'm going to change the value of the vector. So I'm going to line go feed. down to this next line. I'm going to say vector. E C T R. Colon. Degrees to radians number one of 73. I am going to set its Degrees value. Degrees to radians number set. one of seven. Scale. Set. Set. Vector2 vector. Vector two, one of nine. There's a whole bunch of things we can do with these vectors. All I want to do is just call set. Set, vector two, vector, vector two, one of two. And I'm going to pass it two different values. The first value is I'm going to just use the same negative 50 that we had before. Zero, comp, space, right paren. And I'm going to pass it zero for the second value. So based on what we've just discussed, vector set negative 50, zero, what does that do? You're assigning a value of negative 50 to X and zero to Y, which would mean that you would still move the player 50 pixels to the left. So you're totally right on, on what I'm doing with the vector. I am setting its value to be uh, negative 50 on the X, zero on the Y. In terms of how much the player is gonna move, that depends on how we use the vector. And you're right, if we just use the negative 50 again in that move value, uh, then it will just move 50 pixels. But now, instead of moving that value, I am going to... Player move X, minus 50. I'm going to remove that move X portion of this. So it's just going to be... Actually, I'll just remove the whole line and, and we'll type it fresh. Player move X, and unselected. So, I'm going to type player... P one R C1 integer 1 of 338. C1 in add, a apply, a apply, apply force, vector 2 force, ve apply force to center, vector 2 force, 2 of 2. I'm going to use the code completion and I'm going to do player colon apply force to center. Code tabs tab control, main dot quorum tab, code left paren. And this is going to take the vector that I've just made. This is why we bothered to make this vector is because the physics uh, applying actions require the use of vectors because of some of the background math they're doing. V E C T R right paren. So at this point, what should happen when I press left arrow in the game if I run this right now? You'll start to accelerate, right? So why, why would it accelerate? Because the vector is a, um, it's not a, well, it's not really a scalar quantity, but force um, accelerates objects uh, proportional to the mass. So. Uh, so if we were doing this on every frame of animation, you'd be totally right, right? Like if we were in the update loop and on every frame where the left arrow was being held down, we applied this force, then yeah, we would be continuously just like 
more and more force is accelerating going faster and faster. Because we have this inside this press key, it's only going to happen exactly once. The moment the left arrow first goes down, when the left arrow first goes down, it will receive a one-time push of force in the direction the vector was given. So let's go ahead and let's run that and we'll see it. Build successful in zero PPIQ game window. So I'm going to press left arrow. Oh, it's not moving. I might not have PPIQ close. So. Quorum Studio 2. We're just going to set this to a truly ridiculous value. We're going to set zero, zero, zero. Thousand and just see what happens. Build successful in zero point PPIQ. Okay. I actually didn't move it as fast as I was expecting. The physics values are always a little wacky and I always have to play with them to experiment. When I pressed it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this and run it again. Quorum Studio. Code Build successful in zero PPIQ. If I just apply this one time force, left arrow, I see that it slides over to the left. It smacks against the, uh, the water over to the left side. And I take my hands off the keyboard and like I, I can't do anything else at this point because I can't move in the other directions. But it moves smoothly and it stopped when it reached uh, a location where I was, it was impassable terrain, right? The physics object could not pass through another physics object because it was using physics movement to handle the, the, the movement, right? So does this seem like what we want for our game? Yeah, um, you know, I, I understand. Um, so, so in a sense, uh, the force you apply, you kind of need to play with it to see um, how much the main player moves, you know, um, no. which is fine, but I'm just kind of... Uh, sure. That, that's yeah. an observation we can take from this. What happens if we reduce menu, this close number? Quorum Let's Studio two point and rather than 50,000, I'm going to set it to 10,000. So one. Cut, it by a, cut it to a fifth of its original value. Go ahead and run this again. Build successful in zero PPIQ game window. I'm going to go ahead and press this. And I can see that I slowly, more slowly than before, move over. Oh, good. Importantly, sure. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yep. Importantly, I pressed the left arrow and I released it and I was still moving, just kind of sliding over, right? Mm -hmm. And if I set my value even lower, you can imagine that at some point my value is going to be low enough where I'm going to slide a little bit and I'm going to come to a stop, right? Especially if we set some of the other pr uh, physics properties on it, like the the physics or the, the linear damping or just like the, not that I expect you to know what the linear damping is, but just there are properties we can set on this that would change how fast it would move, how it would slide. But if I keep pressing the left arrow, wouldn't I kind of expect it to keep moving and not to just kind of like go a little bit and then stop? Or inversely, if I press the left arrow and then I release it, don't I kind of want to stop moving? Oh. I, so I this is okay. this is basically what I'm building up to. So uh -huh. we can use the force, uh, as Stefik would be so eager to make a Star Wars reference. We can use force to propel something with this sort of one-time jolt, but it's not really what we want for continuous movement. For that, what we'd rather use is to take advantage of linear velocity. So just based on the name, what would you expect the linear velocity? From Adam Stockhausen to everyone, if you repeatedly tap the key, it builds upon itself. Alert. Yeah, that is totally true, Adam, what you've posted, according to my screen reader. You can continuously apply force and it will build on top of each other. It doesn't replace the old force, it, it builds. But yeah, linear velocity. Based on the name, what does that seem like it would do? What does that represent for an object? Yes. Uh, the speed in a single direction? Yeah. It is, I have an object and I am going to tell it, as opposed to force where it's like, you're right, like you apply a force, it gives it a push, and then you can just kind of like keep applying more pushes, more pushes, keep shoving it along with the force that you're applying to it. Linear velocity is instead saying, this is a measurement of how fast this object is going in a direction. And importantly, if I set it to that value, it's going to stay at that value until some outside force changes it, right? So if I give an object a linear velocity that is just like uh, zero on the x, 
10 on the y. It just, it's just a, a vector that just points straight up and it doesn't go on the x-axis at all. I should expect that that object will be moving upwards with this uh, physical force of 10 units. And it's going to continue moving in that direction until I either change that linear velocity again or some outside physical force changes it. So for example, it runs into the water or some other tile that is uh, solid and physical. And then the linear velocity changes because it impacted something and physical forces were applied to it, right? Mm -hmm. If I use that, then I should be able to more smoothly uh, allow for the movement uh, going to the left. So Close. let's go ahead and just try changing that. Quorum Studio 2.0.1. So rather than apply force to center, I'll go ahead, I'll remove this whole line and I'll type it again. Player apply force to center, and 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 unselected. So I'm gonna go ahead, player, a, 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 colon. C1 integer one of 300, and C, S, C, T, set, set linear damping, set linear velocity, vector two linear velocity, two of code tabs tab. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set player, set linear velocity. Left paren. I'm just gonna pass it that same vector from before. V, e, C, T, R, right paren. We're just gonna see what happens. I expect that the value I'm passing this is much larger than it should be because the force and the linear velocity, I don't think calculate in the same way. Force somehow translates into linear velocity that I don't think you're gonna want this much. But I actually don't know that, so I'm gonna test it and find out. So, but before I do that. Player set linear velocity, vector, selected. All that we've done in this code with what I've changed is player set linear velocity, vector. I've just replaced that apply force to center with set linear velocity. If I go ahead and run this now. Build successful in zero PPIQ game window. I'm gonna go ahead, press left arrow. I just zipped right off the left side of the screen incredibly fast. And actually, I'm not even on the island anymore. So why is that? Why, why did I just fly off the left side of the screen? This one's not obvious, but. You broke the physics engine? I did, in fact, just break the physics engine. <laughs> the physics engine will check to see if I run into something, but I just gave it a speed that is so high, it actually just passed through objects without even realizing that they were in the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we're not going to set that linear velocity that high. I'm going to do what I said before. I'm going to set it to like 10 and just Close. see what it does. Quorum Studio 2, player set linear, zero selected, zero, zero. The reason I do this is because I believe that as opposed to force, where it's like there is some amount of physical force that's being applied. I forget exactly what it is. It might be measured in like newtons or something. It, it's a large value because it's some number that's being applied and being calculated through physics. Linear velocity is more a measure of distance that's being traveled over a period of time. And so I'm fairly certain that this notification actually for represents uh, pixels over a second. But we're going to see if that's true when I run this. Build successful in zero point EPIQ game window. Yeah, you can see now I said it's 10. It's moving very slowly, about 10 pixels to the left per second, right? Uh, importantly, I have, once again, my hands are off the keyboard. It is still moving to the left. And now it's hit the, the water and the linear velocity. Something has impacted it. It can't move any further to the left because something is it's run into. The linear velocity is not 10 anymore, but we can't really tell because it would be just running into something anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So we have solved one half of smooth movement, right? I am smoothly moving to the left, but I'm not stopping when I let go of the key, right? So what could we do to, to fix that? We're going to set the action least key. Yeah, exactly. We have one action right now where we are checking to see, am I pressing the key? We can use the same uh, sort of strategy to check, did I release the key? If so, stop moving. So let's go ahead and do that. EP close. Quorum Studio 2.0. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add a new action. Uh, action. C -I -N space R -E 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 -D -K -Y. Key. Left paren. Keyboard event. K -B -R -D -E -V -T space. I'm going to give this a name. I'll give it the name event, but you can call it whatever you want. E -T right paren. And D. End. Blank. Action release key. Keyboard event event. Before I write any code inside this action, I, I named this action release key. What if I named it something different? It wouldn't run that method right. wouldn't be called because you're I'm assuming you're overriding a method that or an action that is in your keyboard listener. Exactly. We are overriding an action in the keyboard listener. We want to make sure it has this exact name or else it won't get called. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going up to my pressed key. 
Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll type the code fresh rather than copy pasting it. But if you want to copy paste it, because it's going to be very similar, you can go right ahead. Blank. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a vector 2. V-E-C-T-O-R-2. V-E-C-T-R. Call it vector. It's much easier to do this time because we don't need pesky use statements. We've already got them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add an if statement, if event, T colon, colon, key code, K y D e space, equals, equals, space, e t event, colon, colon, left, all capitals, F F T E D blank. I am going to set the value of my vector to, what should I set it to? V e c t r F set vector to vector, code tabs, tab control. What would be a reasonable value for me to set this vector to for what I'm trying to do? I want I want the object to stop when I do this. Zero. Zero. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and give it zero on the x. Space. Space. Cut. Space. Zero. I'm gonna set it to zero on the y as well, and we will see in a little bit why this is actually um, a little bit of a, a brute force solution that's going to uh, come back and bite us a little bit, but it'll be okay for what we're doing. Right, Brian. Now I've got this. I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. Player set linear velocity. B F Y Col S set, set linear I Y left paren V E C right paren. I'm going to pass it that vector. Uh, before I run this, just because it was moving very slowly before, I'm also going to go up to line 61 where I set the vector for the press key. I'm just going to make that a little larger just so it moves a little faster. Zero. I'm just going to make it move at 100 pixels instead of uh, 10. Um, this will dramatically increase the speed. It's going 10 times faster, but 100 pixels is still not that much in terms of movement speed. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Build successful in zero point EPIQ game window. I am going to quickly tap and release the left arrow. And we can see that the character smoothly moves to the left, stops as soon as I release the key, and then I can continue to press it to, to keep moving on, up until I get to the point where I'm at the water and I can't move anymore. So. Is, is everyone with me so far? Before I continue, conceptually okay. yes, practically no. <laughs> what? Where are you at practically? What? What's? Uh, where are you at? Practically, the problem is, <clears throat> whenever I am now trying to, so let's say I'm using the set command to put yeah. the vector. Quorum Studio becomes unresponsive. Really. Yep, and then I have to close out. Really weird because, because the same thing's happening to me too. Oh uh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I was about to well, say something here, dude. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you guys mentioned it because that's um, obviously pretty bad. Yeah, uh, when so I, whenever the, I type a work, colon, it's like the it's like the yep. autocomplete isn't working, it, or it's like the autocomplete's crashing. You crash when you type the colon. Yep. Yeah, it just jams. So wow. the workaround for that. The workaround is oh, you go into Windows Notepad, you type yeah, whatever what you want to Copy, type. paste the colon. <laughs> that's what I did. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> the whole statement. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing, too. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. <laughs> I'm not alone in this. God, I don't even know how to respond to that. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, that's not okay. That's so strange that. So it's not just that your code completion is crashing because you're also having the issue with like the alt enter not giving you the, the hints. There's something funky going on with your environment that not, not that like you guys are doing something wrong or something, but I, I don't know what is happening in your environment that these bugs are happening. And I would like to, because if I know what's happening, then I can fix them. But, um, Hmm. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know. I've restarted NVDA multiple times because most of the time when Quorum, Quorum Studio freezes up, I end yeah. up. It ends up crashing NVDA too. Um, this doesn't so I have to restart sound it like too. it's the screen reader that's doing it because the alt enter is not working. The screen reader shouldn't have any impact on whether or not the editor hints right works right. And I'm also using NVDA right now, so something. Yeah. I mean, alt enter in the sense that <clears throat> it tells a spelling error. It doesn't say what the hint is. So you press yeah. Alt Enter, you still get the using statement, the use statement that that works. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a new one. Uh, so for sure, I'm wondering if it has to do with the synthesizer. I don't know. I can't say I understand nearly enough about how screeners function, but um, I mean, I'm using no, eloquence I'm using, with N, I'm using eloquence for NVDA. I'm using eSpeak. Uh, and it sounds like you're using Sappy. Uh, yeah, he's well, using Sappy. So. Um, I have no idea if that, if that, you know, 
you know, no, no, this is out. It seems unlikely, but I mean, <laughs> anything's up for, for grabs with this stuff, man. Um, it's Windows 10, maybe, because 10 is very quick to say, oh, this is unresponsive. <clears throat> Could be Windows 10. Could you guys do me a favor? When you guys, um, and th this is a total hassle, and I apologize. Rather than just running Quorum Studio, could I ask you guys to uh, pop open a console, navigate to where the Quorum Studio jar is, and run it from the console so that if it crashes again, that it'll tell me where it crashed? Uh, yep. All right. you, um, you know, end your game. Yeah. So that's I can see the. Oh, sorry. Close. Quorum, Sarah Larkin has left the meeting alert. You want me to open Quorum Studio uh, from the Quorum Studio jar in the program files? Yeah, so in program files in Quorum Studio, there should be Quorum Studio jar. If you can run that, um, just uh, Java dash jar, Quorum Studio jar. Oh, I see what you're saying. So it'll actually throw the errors yeah, to the Yeah, If it has a stack trace, it'll give it to me in the error. Got it. And that'll help me a lot. Yeah, you can actually see in the code, uh, in the command screen prompt, sharing. Command prompt, JRE bin Java jar quorum studio dot jar. I'm actually doing the same yeah. thing because I, I always run it that Task way. Switcher. I know what happens if it crashes. Is this a quorum standard library dot jar? Uh, no, it's quorum studio dot jar. There's several jars in there, but um, uh, you're not in the run folder, are you? Uh, no, well, I'm just in quorum studio oh, in the program files. Um, don't tell me I don't have Java. Uh, if you don't, then we provide a, 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 a runtime environment. It should be, um, if you're in the, the folder, and, and apologies to everyone that we're taking a moment here, but um, if you're in the folder, just uh, JRE slash bin slash Java, we, we have it available there. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, good. Now I can repeat that if you need. Sure, let's see. So William, the conceptually, yeah. Um, so setting the linear velocity zero zero to the release key is like a, you know, like a really literally putting that character in the box that you cannot go anywhere. The, uh, the zero it, zero body. It's hard applying the brakes on the character, right? The character has some information in it that tells it how fast it's going according to the physics system. And that value is the linear velocity. Uh -huh. When you say set that linear velocity to zero, zero, what you're telling the physics system is this guy is moving at a speed of zero units by zero units per second. In other words, this guy uh, is stopped. He's stationary. Uh, oh, I got you. All right. Yeah, I was kind of confused that, you know, I would thought that, since you applied negative 100, um, you need to apply back the you know, 100 to the... Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's not like the force, because that's what the force did, right? When we were applying the force, it was like, it has some speed or something, and we don't care. Just like give it more, move it more, just push it in a direction. But the linear velocity uh -huh. isn't like that. It's setting the exact value at the time it should, uh, that you set it. Uh, sure. Some some reason now when I hit run, I'm not getting anything in the console. I'm not getting any error message. Like I'm just not getting anything. <laughs> uh, do you want to go ahead and here? Let me stop sharing my screen. And you can show me what's going on with yours because I'm not quite sure I follow. Stop share. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I have started Quorum Studio too, and everything is hung. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, that's good. Uh, I have a stack trace. <laughs> uh, okay, you got it before me. Good. <laughs> uh, I can send it to you in Slack. I don't know how big the stack trace is. Uh, yeah, you can send me the stack trace and uh, in Slack. That's totally fine. Shouldn't be so large that Slack will complain. If you need me to take a look too, we can watch. Uh, yeah, actually, if you could, that would actually be really helpful, Tim. Is there a way to get us into another break room? Um, I don't know if I have, I, I feel like if some, Stefik might be able to do that, but I don't think I can because I am just a, a lowly participant. I am not a host.
I'll, uh, whoever needs help, maybe jump back to main. We can smoke get stuff. So does this look all right, this section? Uh, yeah, so go ahead and uh, click a clean and build resource and see what happens. Personal Mike Forum Studio 2.0.1, 4 of 7. Open JDK platform binary dialog. Wait for the program to re close the program. Cancel button. Uh, go ahead and click on your errors tab. Narrator dialog. Close. Click like there's anything there. Being, yeah. Exiting narrator. Um, go ahead and click the save button. Close the. Um, Just close it. Actually, uh, go ahead and uh, cl click on the project in the project tree. All right. And g clean. Uh, click the uh, the wrench in a trash can icon. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, that's the clean and build. Oh, okay. Now we've got some errors. So it looks like. Uh, most likely there's an extra end statement or something uh, along those lines. Go ahead and uh, scroll down a little bit. We'll see if it's... Let's see, that's there. Uh, action. Oh, yeah, your if statement uh, in the release key oh. uh, should have a, an end on it. Oh, this one doesn't? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever need to organize your, your stuff in terms of its um, spacing, uh, yeah. You could just use the tab and shift tab to fix the indentation. It makes it easier to tell which things oh, the ends yeah, go to. I'm going to do that. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. They don't, like, when you click, they don't connect. Yeah, like, that's something I really miss out of Sodbeans. Uh, uh, looks like on line 73, you have an error. Yeah, let's see. Is it that? Oh, I see. If you compare how you uh, did the same thing on line 64, you can see. Oh, uh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. Duh. Okay. Ah. There you go. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to get caught up. And, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Sorry, I didn't. It, it's hard for me to tell if I'm moving too fast because I can't generally like look out at the confused faces of people. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I know the desire is so often it's strong to be like I don't want to be the one that's holding everybody up. So I'm not going to say anything, but like I need you guys to tell me if I'm going too fast because I cannot tell. So uh, okay. I'm now, happy to help. So since yeah. you uh, uh, just since you said so, <laughs> could, you <take> <laughs> sure. at, could you take a look at my screen? A yeah, bit? go ahead and share your screen. I'm happy to. Take I'm it. almost sure this is just a um, spelling mistake. Uh, hold on. See, I got this, you know, let, you know, the error sign on the event key code equal event left and stuff like that. I just don't seem to find any mistake to cause that. Uh, the the K in key code should be lowercase. <sighs> so, yeah, it's just a, a totally... Yeah, key code. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's dumb. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I have a stack trace too, but okay. um, it's scrolled past the screen. How do I give it to you? Uh, are you are you using Windows? Yep. Uh, you, you should just be able to do a Control A and uh, Control C to select all and then copy. Oh, really? And okay. that'll copy everything in the, yeah. in the command line. And that's totally fine. You can send me the whole thing. That's... Yeah. I did just send my stack trace through the Epic Advanced because I couldn't figure out how to uh, send to you a direct message. Uh, it wasn't. Oh yeah, I see up. what you got in here. Uh, objects being references undefined in the oh, wow. equation handler. And the object being things... references undefined. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so all I was trying to do was. Uh, I was still kind of stuck back at trying to define the key because uh, every time I'd, I'd do it and then uh, I'd forget to save and it would crash. So my pr I'm trying to fill my press key uh, action here. Yeah. And so I was just typing event and then I'd put in the colon and it would, or I'd, and it would just, just crash. Crunch, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It's in the code completion handler. I'll have to talk to Stepik about that. 
Um, for whoever needed the assistance, do they still need help? Or do we get it figured out? Uh, so we haven't solved the issue of why the stack trace is happening, but I do see it here. Thank you for, for helping out, by the way. Um, whoever it is, Stefik has to assign us to a room, so he needs to know who. Needs gotcha. To. Uh, so if you still need help, maybe jump to main and we can get. Sure, I appreciate it. Spot. Um, okay. Um, I have Slack closed. Forget it. I'm gonna just email this. You can go ahead and email it. Do you have my email? Or or I uh, and no, someone else is fine. Just to say, give there. give it to me. Um, what's your email? Uh, it is uh, William dot L E. So yeah, yeah W I L L I A M. Yeah. Dot A L L E E. Yeah. At U N L V dot E D U. U M L V. Yep, got you. If you want to go ahead and email that to me, that's totally fine. And also, if you just want to, like, you know, email me in general about anything in related to Quorum, you can email that address. And I am not the best about checking my email, but I try. <laughs> so the, there's more that I, I have to go through with basically just, like, cleaning up some of this movement, talking about it. But the most important thing is that we actually run through it and that everyone's stuff is working. Because if I talk to you guys about like, you know, things that you can't actually do, it's just hypotheticals that you, that are not useful, right? So getting everybody on the same page is my goal here, first off. So. One thing, is it possible to even turn off autocomplete? Because I think that's what's crashing this. It is the co-completion that's uh, crashing yeah. it. I, yeah, turn, turn it, it, it off. We've we'll just asked you for the spelling. Turn it off? Uh, not without me rebuilding the compiler and giving you a new one, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were desperate, I could do that, but we're not going to do that in the middle of the session. That's like, uh, no, <clears> all, another way to do this. you know, abandon the battlements. <laughs> I'll send it to you before tomorrow's session, you know? So, well, I'll see if no. the stack trace looks like something Seth can fix. So I'll see if he can fix it. Uh, the there's yeah, another way to do it. Um, for those of us who are having this problem, can we use command line quorum? Uh, that is also available. Yeah, you could use command line quorum. Yeah, I do have the jar. I think the jar should be with quorum studio, isn't it? Or do I have to download it separately? Uh, I think that it's available in there, but I actually don't know that for sure. Um, yeah, I just downloaded it from the website, the quorum jar. It's really strange that you guys are running into this in the first place, and I'm wondering why it's happening to you guys and not me. And it feels like the sort of thing that if we, it's possible that like closing the tab and closing the project and like reopening it might get you past whatever thing is happening. Because this feels like there there is something going on that like the state of the environment is is wrong. So if if, if one of you guys wouldn't mind trying that for me just before we <laughs> ditch Chrome Studio. Why not? You guys being able to actually do stuff is obviously really important. And so, you know, if we can't get Quorum Studio to work, obviously much better to use Quorum, uh, the Quorum command line compiler than to make you guys slog through not being able to do anything. But if we can use Quorum Studio, it's preferable because then it, it's easier for me to keep you guys at the same place with me, like if I'm moving to the scene editor or something. And it's also easier in the sense that, or sorry, not easier. It is more useful for, for me selfishly, because I, I get to know what things are working for you and what are not. And getting user feedback kind of stuff is really important for us. Lowe's project. So does closing Quorum Studio not close the project? No, closing Quorum Studio, Quorum Studio intentionally reloads your projects that you had open. Um, oh, although just restarting Quorum Studio, I uh, actually no, we've restarted Quorum Studio many times because it keeps crashing, so. Uh, yeah. It's not closing the project. <laughs> I'm hitting close project. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Weird. Can you share your screen with me? Yep. Uh, where is the ship? 
That's fun. Um, yeah. Share I close, screen. I close the project and it's no longer showing up in the list of uh, projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> William, do you see my project? Uh, <laughs> oh, so they have to close the project, but the, <laughs> the tab is still open. So close project. Yeah. Um, can, can you close the tab as well? The, closing the project should close the tab, but it doesn't for some reason. Uh, uh, I know that's ridiculous, but um, okay, Control F four. Okay, it's closed. So that, that looks correct. All right, and so, now you're saying reopen the project. Go ahead, reopen the project, reopen the file, and we're just going to oh. see if it still does the same thing. All right. Let's I apologize for all the hoops. VCT set zero zero. VCT set zero zero. Mm. So let's VCT colon, and I think it's hard Gosh. also. Yeah. Yeah. That's so strange. <laughs> okay, is there a way for us to quickly check how many? dud processes of quorum studio are in memory i don't mind going to task manager but it's just that zoom oh. is also on this machine uh yeah i can't think of any way other than task manager unfortunately um i okay. wonder if code completion is failing because of a null pointer reference i wonder if there's something i wonder if there is something at the top of the file there's something in the code that if we write this exact code, it causes this crash. Maybe like a, a use statement that's wrong in a particular way or the class. This, I'm sorry, this feels solvable and I have such an urge to be like, I am the developer of the language. I must fix all the things immediately. <laughs> and I'm just, this is, I'm not doing you guys a service. I apologize. So if you guys would rather do the, the console compiler, that's just fine. Otherwise, um, I am curious to take a look at the top of the file, but you guys, you know, no, this is for you guys, for you guys learn. It is not about like me fixing stuff on your time. So. Now we'll try and show you what's on top of the file, okay. no problem. We can spend some time on that. And because I think the learning will be a lot faster if we can all be in the same environment. Yeah, I do think that's true. I will definitely talk to Stefik about seeing if we can fix this issue because this is definitely like, you know, okay. this is a real obstacle. Mouse mode on. So I have to actually launch Narrator. Quorum Studio 2.0. Open JDK platform See binary. This. This is like yeah. Close ahead, the program. Close, wait for, close. The, the fact that it does button. this not responding issue as opposed to closing entirely is due like to narrator the part of just how the, the architecture is set up underneath. Usually a core okay. program, if it crashes, it'll just like, crash narrator. Narrator. rather than hang, but... okay. I'm going to try the task manager thing if yeah. I disappear completely. Uh, I'll lock back in. Okay. Yeah, you know how to come back, right? Secure <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Okay, secure. Windows switch. Won't assume it's because you don't like it anymore. Task manager. Desktop list. This is one of three. Task manager processes performance. History start up. Task manager. Do you still see my screen? Process my web app. Process Microsoft Outlook list. Process notes and list. Process notes and process task manager list. Process Windows command process Zoom meetings thirty two bit list of items better with process Windows command process list of items better process process Zoom meetings thirty two background processes process and email process that cuts pro pro process T M service process T M service process T M process process cut on the list of pro process drag and process drag and process process drop box pro process drop box process drop box process 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 yes rich copy process cut process 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 hyper process process in process in T M process malware process Microsoft process Microsoft Outlook 
Process my process Microsoft process Microsoft text in process no process mobile pro list of items process and video container list of process and video container process process presentation font cache process QDM doesn't process QDQ 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 process Top window, top window, Let's go back to the top of that file because we should totally do this. Yeah. Yeah. Warrant you the other point zero point one window. Progress up, progress up zero. I don't know why this brings up this progress bar. Project three new. It's because whenever Quorum Studio launches, there's a loading screen that pops up that lets you know that it's loading resources. Um, and it's supposed to tell you how long you have to wait until it's done, right? Okay. Um, top of the file. Anything yeah. that you can see. Yes, I see the statements. Uh, those totally look fine. Um, let me compare that against my own stuff to make sure I'm not overlooking something obvious. Sure, looks fine to me. Um, scroll down a little bit. We'll just take a quick. Actually, um, try try building it. See if it compiles. All right. Input EOF. So, looks like it's most likely. Um, go go ahead and scroll down. We'll see if there's any obvious uh, missing end statements here. Sorry, scroll down in the um, text box. No, there's probably an extra end somewhere. Yeah, I think so. Can you um, control two jump back to the text editor? We'll just scroll down a little and just see. Uh, I'm in the text editor. I'm right at the end of the class. Okay, so. Action release yeah, it looks like you might be um, missing an end. Missing an end, yeah. Okay, I do this. That's okay, so I see that there's other stuff that's compiled. Go ahead and save this, and I suspect you could actually uh, use the colon now, and I think it actually might work now. And if I'm wrong, then you have to go through free free to get in the apologize. That's okay. That's that's Save it before you try using your colon uh, again. <laughs> yep, saved. Yeah. <laughs> build? Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, uh, it did not build, but uh, the reason it didn't build is really uh, interesting. Vector 2 on line 62, Vector 2 needs to be capitalized. It's not uh -huh. a valid... This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not capitalized. Okay. Okay, go ahead and do something with the colon on that. You were always doing that with vector two, right? Yeah, you have some other errors, and we can fix those. But before you do, just okay, go ahead yeah. and try to VCT colon. VCT. Uh, no. I still did it. <laughs> Ah, God, I was so hyped up. I was so ready for that to be the fix. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we'll go ahead and we'll fix your, your errors across the entire thing, see if it works. Because it's possible, oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, of course we'd have to fix all the errors. It Because of how code completion works, it needs to have a successful compile in order to try and run off it. Okay, Ooh. sorry. Go ahead and uh, I'm not sure I if Alt-F4 will try and close the, the hanging application or not, but just go ahead and kill it however you can and we'll restart it. It, 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 it oh, locked yeah. up a little bit less this time. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I didn't have to launch Narrator. <laughs> okay. Uh, so while you're doing that, I just want to say for the, the rest of the group, are people um, who are not experiencing this crash? Are you guys more or less caught up with where I seem to be in terms of the content? I, I set up the 
I was just asking if we wanted to add, you know, right key. Um, yes, that's exactly what I was about to ask. Is for those of you who are not having any issues and can uh, continue, I would like you guys on your own, and then we're going to all work on it together after, but take some time on your own. See if you can plug in the commands for the right up and down keys in the press and release keys and get your movement in all four directions. Okay, uh, William. Yes. Uh, so I did that, and my keys are working uh, fine. Okay, but good. The interesting thing is that I have um, a pawn in the middle of my sure. um, map, and then when my character collide with the pawn, especially on the edge of it... Oh, do they start rotating? Yeah. Yeah, so we can fix that, and... Um, the the way that you fix that is on the player uh -huh. um you you want to use the can rotate action and you want to set it to false so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and i'll share my screen and we we should all do this because this is going to be useful for everyone um i'm just gonna quickly share and do this here uh i do not have my screen reader on at the moment welcome okay oh quorum studio 2.0.1 window Code in the create game, we're going to want to grab our player. B A R. Code C1 integer 1 of 3. C1 integer N. Left paren. Right paren. Player can rotate. False. Selected. We want this exact code. This will stop it from doing that. Just set the player, disallow rotation on it from physics. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Stop meeting. I'm going to stop screen sharing for right now. Uh, are you debugging the uh, application in Chrome Studio, Pranav? Yeah, so I fixed my errors. Uh, let me okay. share the screen. Yeah. So that... Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, looks like build was successful. Yeah, build was successful. So now we try VCT. There we go. And so co no code completion popped up, but we'll consider that a success considering what it was. Yeah. Um, okay, I will definitely have to talk to Stepik about this. I think I know what is happening here. I think in particular what happened is that you had a build of the compiler. At some point, in order to give code completion and also to give you the red underlines, it continuously tries to just do like little mini compiles to see if the code you're doing makes sense. That's how it tells you that there's compiler errors. It checks to see that something like vector2 vct wasn't valid because the, the capital V was missing. Um, okay. If, I think in this particular case, what happened is you had a variable you declared, it didn't recognize the type and it was an error. You tried to use code completion on this bad type. And rather than checking for it correctly and saying, I can't give it to you, it said, I'm totally going to give this to you. The, the type was null, and then it just exploded. So, and then we had to get it to a successfully compiling state so it could refresh the mini compile to give you correct red lines again. And that also, I think, got you past code completion. Because we were able to test this specifically enough that I think I have a test case, I think I can talk to Stefik and we can hopefully get this fixed sooner rather than later, but I'll have to talk to him about it. Um, Tim, uh, were you still having this issue as well? Were you able to go and clean up your uh, compiler errors? Uh, as far as I could tell, it looked like it was building successfully. Okay. At this uh, point, is your colon still crashing now that you're building successfully? Uh, yeah, it definitely is still crashing. Uh, well, that puts a lot of holes in my theory. This <laughs> uh, I, say, I, I don't know. At least I think you it says that it's building. We'll, at we'll, least, it, yeah. We'll check. Yeah. I'm good, William. Everything's working. Okay, great. There it is. I'm just going to share my screen. All right. Okay. Um, where am I? Okay. I'm going to 
just pulling over the jar into my workspace or the quorum executable. Sure. Okay. Okay, so main. Okay. Yeah, so the studio do... window very, very small. It doesn't seem to actually have any content in it. Oh, uh that's uh what's can I maximize this? Yeah, let's maximize key. Is this can I zoom here? Is that helping? Uh, yeah, I don't know what the maximize key is off the top of my head. I think it's. I know it's Alt Space generally does it, but it's not working. Uh, hmm. View here. Does that help at all? Uh, unfortunately, I still can't see anything. The problem is that the window itself is is too small to see the content of. Um, I'm not sure why. Come on. No, alt space doesn't work. Alt space is usually how I get to that uh, menu for maximizing. You know, uh, can you use uh, Windows key and up arrow? Windows key and up arrow. Oh, yeah, that seems to work. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, I see that there's a, a couple of issues. It seems like a lot of um, just um, uh, case sensitivity stuff in the use statements up here. Let's see. Uh, so uh, on this line, on line six and on the line above it, uh, the I in interface needs to be capitalized. Oh. Uh, yeah, right there. Also the E in events in the uh, portion after it. Got it. Yeah, and go ahead and do that on the line below as well. Yeah. One thing that would be super helpful is being able to like just navigate by errors. Yeah, that's actually that's something I was talking about with Stepic um, just a couple of days before the um, conference. Actually, it's it's on our feature list that we want to get in for sure. All right, um, so, uh, also, me feedback. Restart NVIDIA here. Come on, there it goes. No, yeah. for for the rest of us at this point, um, unfortunately, what I have next for this is not something that we can easily do while debugging because basically we're gonna discuss and brainstorm some stuff. Um, so let's see if we can get this cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and do that with the remainder of our time. Uh, so on line... Uh, it says build successful. Uh, but that does not always... seem correct because I can see an error on line four. Go ahead and uh, go back up to line four and uh, two more. Uh, so the... Uh, library there should be, yeah, that's that's one of the things. Library should also be libraries, plural. Well. Oh. And then uh, at the very end, item 2D, the D needs to be capitalized. Gotcha. Um, hey, now it actually, it. it actually told me that there was errors. That's good. Okay, good. Uh, go down to, if you can go to the error table, you can also select one of the cells and it'll jump you to that error. Um, or alternatively, if you want to do um, the go-to line, yeah, if you press enter on that, it doesn't it like it. parent. Yeah. Uh, oh, you have two like... colons. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to have. Um... That's weird. There you go. It doesn't seem to have actually moved the visual of a text box to it. Um, Oh, that's Go, weird. Could you just like move your uh, that the carrot up and then back down? Okay, cool. Uh, me player equals parent game find item two D by name. Uh, parent. Oh, on line thirty five, that should be parent game enable physics. So parent colon game colon enable physics. I got it. Yep. Oh no. Right, I forgot okay. about that. <laughs> Scared me for a moment. I forgot about that. Okay, but hey, like we use a colon and it didn't crash. That's a oh, good sign. It, well, it yeah, it fixed it. So well, that's good. Look at that. Okay, so um, go ahead and uh, clean the build and see if we've knocked out the errors at this point. But all right, okay. looks like all right. Cool, it's actually running. 
Cool. Okay, so at this point, uh, I want to take some time. And so I know that uh, for uh, Tim, Pranav, you've been having to deal with this. And I really appreciate you guys just sort of sitting and letting me work with you on this because knowing that actually really helps. Um, for the, um, the rest, uh, have you guys all hooked up the, the if statements so you have movement in all four directions now? No, not yet. Um, with, uh, with the, do you have to create a new or rename the action? It's saying action press key is already defined. Do I have so to? the way that we're going to do this, uh, here, let me share screen and we'll do it all together here to, uh, com to complete this. What's the player method? Is it apply linear velocity or something else? Set linear velocity. Set linear velocity. Right. Yeah, so my, so I can type colon down without having a problem. So uh, your theory earlier might still be true, yeah. Uh, it like weirdly has something to do with like the syntax in in the particular project. Yeah, that's so super weird. That's definitely something that um, that's a compiler bug, and I have to talk to Stefik about that because he's the one that writes the compiler. I do a lot of the work on the GUI and the whatnot, so I'm I'm responsible for a lot of issues. But I can always be happy when it's not my fault, and I get to blame Stefik for it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll talk to him about it because this this was a pretty uh, gnarly issue. I'd be surprised if. Uh, no one ran into it in the beginner group as well. So let me see if uh, I'll talk to him and see if we can do something about it. Um, for this point, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn my screen back on and I'm going to go ahead and share screen. And let's go ahead and we'll set up the rest of the movement keys uh, all together here. Meeting controls window. Uh, okay, so at this point, um, I want to set up the rest of my movement. So I've already got my left set up. Uh, in the press key and release key. In order to get the other directions set up, I'm still using the exact same actions, right? I'm still using press key, I'm still using release key. I don't wanna make extra copies of them. All I wanna do is I just wanna take Quorum this Studio if statement that I have and I'm gonna add some extra ones. So I am going to add a new if statement. If space. E e e event colon, colon e one D e sp equal space equal to e event e e e e right. right integer one of code tabs. Then I'm going to give it a different uh, direction in this vector. So what should I set the vector to? Right. Um, vector 100, yep. comma 2. So I'm going to set this to 100, 0. Right and I'll apply linear velocity. Y, left, V, E, C, O, right, paren. And so I'm going to have to do the same thing down below as well. Uh, I'm going to show you line feed. slightly different code for this one. Rather than making a brand new if statement, something else that I can do is I can use, uh, you, you've seen how I can use else to sort of like fall into something. If I uh, didn't meet the condition of the if, I can go into the else instead. I'm going to use else e if, e -F -F space. all one word, and else e if, e the event, key code, key code, code tabs tab, space. Uh, is e right. T. funny that I'm getting the red lines and pings for this one and not for the other. Um, and I'm going to use the exact same code. As a matter of fact, I'm going to uh, right paren selected. Are selected. Literally copy paste vector set. This vector set zero zero set linear velocity to the vector. And with that in mind, I actually don't need to necessarily write this code a whole bunch because uh, I, I wanted to do this to show off the else if, and these two pieces of code are different, right? So in the pressed key on line 62, if event key code equals event left, if I meet this condition, right, I then go down into this code. Vector set minus 100, zero. I set the vector. I, uh, I will apply it using that set linear velocity. And it ends. If event key code equals event right. And then it checks the condition of the next if statement, right? Because even though I've already met one of these conditions, the, the event was for the left arrow key. It can't also be for another key at the same time. But because of how I've written my code, it's going to check that anyway, because these are just two separate different if statements. They're just two pieces of code, and it's going to go run them both. As opposed to the release key one, where it checks to see if the event key code equals event left, if it succeeds in it, follows that condition it'll go inside vector set 
zero, zero. It'll set the vector, it'll set the linear velocity. And then if it did that, this next portion, the else if, it only checks that if it didn't succeed at the previous one. And you can chain these together, right? So you could do if the key code is equal to left, else if, so it's not the left, what if it's the right? Else if it's not the left or the right, what if it is up? Else if it's the, the, the down key, right? So, the, so the, William, yes. So about that, you know, the pressed key, um, well, just the saying that my experience is that if you set it in a separate if conditional like that, yeah. let's say that you set up the uh, up arrow key, right, in sure. the same way. And then program uh, is capable of taking left key and up arrow, and that moves the uh, character sure. diagonally. Um, I mean, then, you know, if we have a left key and a right key, for some reason, someone pushes the uh, same key at the same time. Yeah. Wouldn't it go like a jiggle in the middle or something so, like that? So I'm actually really glad you asked this because it's a really good question. If I am pressing multiple keys uh, at the same time, this press key action for this keyboard event, it's going to tell me about one of those presses at a time, right? So when I first press the left arrow key, it's going to send me events and say the left arrow key was pressed. If I then press the right arrow key, it's going to send me another event, and that event will tell me nothing about the state of the left arrow key. It will only tell me, hey, the right arrow key was just pressed. And even if you manage to press both of them at the exact same time, the computer couldn't tell the difference between them, which is incredibly difficult because the, the, the way that this is getting sent, it's, you know, imperceptibly tiny bits of time. But even if you somehow manage to get it where you have both of them at, uh, uh, as far as the computer could tell at the same time, even then it would still only send you one of those things at a time. It would, and it would oh, send you both it, of them. It would, send, I got you. it would send one event, hey, left arrow was pressed. And then as soon as that action was done, it'd be like, hey, I got another one for you. Another one was just pressed, it's the right arrow key. Okay, yeah, so, that, now that, okay, so, all right. Yeah, I, that makes sense. I, yeah. I think I, I was remembering the time that I was using the input, input polling. That is absolutely true with the input polling. You do yeah. have to ask yep. about each of them separately because they could be held down at the same time. I was going to ask, and how do you deal with uh, holding multiple keys down? Do you have to so, use import polling then? You don't have to, but this is something that I mentioned before that the way we're doing it was kind of brute force and that it was going to be a little messy in some ways because of how we're doing it. And this is totally what I'm talking, or, or this, this point that you're bringing up is totally what I was thinking about then. And so I'm glad that we're getting to this point. If we set up the rest of these, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to set up the other if statements here. Yeah, I'm going to literally copy paste these and I select plug them in real quick and blank. Let's see what happens. So instead of 100, zero selected, 100, zero selected, zero, right parent, zero. I'm going to swap the X and Y values here. 10 selected, zero, zero. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in these other ones as well. Else if it and there's a better way that we can write this code as well. But. Else if event line. So because of the way that we are toolbar. essentially Save all brute forcing this, I'm going to go ahead and run this, and we'll see what happens. Build successful in zero EPIQ game. So you can change the keys on the press key. Did I not? Oh, Max thank Clark, you for catching Quorum that. Studio not, that code tabs tab control main dot quorum tab code up if r right select. Uh, also, like I wrong if it, you, uh, and. and here you will, can you uh, paste like one of those uh, vector, one of those uh, those conditionals into uh, like Slack or something? Player so set linear velocity, caught up vector, here real quick. and selected, space ah. selected, vector set, minus 100. Start zoom one, notepad, slack one running window, slack start epic event, if event key code equals event left vector set, notepad, sky, notepad, quorum, start zoom one running window, quorum, starts task, room four, check, quorum studio two, window, send chat to, edit send chat to, zoom group chat window, 
Input chat text vector two vector if event key code from me to Timothy vector two vector so if event key code zoo, equals I event. I sent it to just you so that I'm not bombarding the people mm -hmm. in the beginner group with this code. Okay. okay. Um, oh, you said it in Zoom. Group. Yeah, I sent it to you in Zoom. If you'd rather, yeah. I can send it to you in Slack instead. Slack would be great because yeah. I still yeah, can't figure out how to copy and paste Slack from F Zoom. Andreas I'm not sure if you can with the screen reader. Sure. It's something that's been um, driving me nuts. Let's see. How do I file history and search dialog? Can I update the clickables file? application quorum? Yeah, if you can figure out a direct message, uh, um, view page two button. Something that it hasn't Zoom worked Zoom for me yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all I can see is Stefik. Profile co conversation with. There you go. So I've just gone ahead. I've copied and pasted it to you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and so this doesn't include the the action header or the end at the at the end okay. of the action, but this is just the contents of that uh, action. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Quorum Studio Two. Uh, so, Meeting. let me go ahead and run this. Build successful in zero PP IQ game. And so we should notice that at this point I can move in all four directions. At this point, I am going to hold the right button, and now I'm going to press up. And I've just hard pivoted upwards without any regard for the fact that I am still pressing the right mouse or the the right arrow key down. And similarly, if I press left and then down, and then I release one of the two keys, regardless of which one, even though I'm still holding the left uh, key down, uh, I've stopped moving completely because of this sort of brute force solution that I've done. And so the way that we could solve this is to look at our vectors and change uh, what values we're putting into them. So suppose Mac that PP, Quorum Studio. I wanted to look at just this particular case. New notification from Slack. With the uh, left arrow, uh, yeah, press key with the left arrow pressed down. I want to start moving to the left, but I don't necessarily want to impact the the vertical direction. If I'm going up, I want to keep going up. If I'm going down, I want to keep going down. So how could I do that? You pass a zero to the vertical direction. So unfortunately, that's what I'm doing right now. And that's overriding the current y velocity, right? I need to make sure that I'm preserving it. Breakout rooms window. Almost, OK, so you oh. get the velocity first. You get it. And once you get the vertical velocity, so then you Put zero. Uh, you put in whatever you want for the x value and whatever velocity you have, because there is a get velocity function there. Exactly. You put that in yep. y. Tim Lockwood has so left the meeting alone. I, I would like to show that in code, but Stefik apparently has uh, brought the uh, the t the countdown on us. We got thirty seconds until the breakout room closes, <laughs> oh. so uh, I would show you. But yeah, that's exactly right. We get the the linear velocity of the item as it already is we get the y value and we plug that into the vector in the y position so that the new linear velocity becomes whatever the x we wanted to set it to was plus the y uh, the y velocity it already had so it continues to maintain it and we would do the same for the release keys to make sure only set the value for the x one that or uh, for the left that changed only set that x and keep the previous y Steve has left Sorry the meeting there. everybody should be coming back now um, good. Okay. So, um, thank you. Bring me back. <laughs> I brought you back. Were you stuck in I there? Know, thank you. I couldn't figure out how to get out of there. <laughs> oh no. I had no idea. Um, so, so when you, you hit that timer, Andy, it gives you 60 seconds and then it will clear everyone out of the room automatically. <laughs> yes. Cause, yes. Cause I, I was like, I'm a prisoner. How do I get out of here? <laughs> oh no. Well, you can always send us a private message on whatever device you want or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. And then we can, but, oh, okay. I'll have to figure out how to get out of the windows for future. Hey, Art, make sure you save. I, yeah, I did, but I wrote <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I, we I, rewrote I, code today. It was great. Lovely. Okay, good. Okay. good. Um, so I want to point out first, uh, I appreciate everybody coming today. Uh, so this is the first day that we actually tried to code. Oh, Co, what are you doing, man? Like I could only see the top of Co's head, and somehow I found that <laughs> feeling. Um, anyway, uh, he moved his camera. So I appreciate everybody coming today. I hope that you've kind of all gotten uh, a little bit of a taste of how to do some coding and also how to get stuff from scenes and how to start to move items from scenes around. That was kind of the goal. 
I don't know. I have no clue in China where the advanced group ended up getting to. You guys probably have been hacking Cena's house all day. Lord knows. Or something <laughs> else. Uh, he turned off his switch, by the way. I discovered that this morning. You know, <laughs> Were you going to send him a wake up message? Because I literally, I literally sent Cena a wake up message to his office, uh, uh, Amazon dot, and it, it rejected my request. So I just want to point that out. <laughs> Anyway, you got through um, last night or you didn't finally? Oh, no, through. I hacked his machine last night for about an hour and a half. So it would <laughs> that would be why it was turned off. Yeah, this <laughs> so, but in any case, um, I hope everybody's kind of getting the hang of stuff. Is there any comments or discussion? How The, the only thing I want to mention is, uh, sorry, I, I want to ask very briefly, is there anything else we should change before tomorrow to make this go more smoothly. It is an online version. None of us have done this before. Is there any recommendations for changes before we start again tomorrow? Uh, Dr. Steffick? Yes, ma'am. May I make an observation? You may. Um, I am not sure of this, but I think given my experience and also given the experience of some of the other members of the group, that um, Quorum may not detect when NVDA is running, and we often have to restart NVDA after we start Quorum Studio in order to see things on the map, etc. So I'm just letting you know and giving you a heads up that that appears to be happening. We have noticed that as well, and we were working on that yesterday because, you know, it's always when you, when you bring in 10 screen reader oh, users into a meeting, you're going to discover certain things. I can confirm that you are correct. And we have a hypothesis as to why that is the case, but we've, we've set up two things to try to figure it out. One is uh, we contacted our friend at Microsoft to try to give us a hand in figuring this out. And Microsoft has agreed to set up a hackathon with us to try to solve some of these remaining issues. And number two, we also have a hypothesis about why it's happening, but we haven't narrowed down exactly what it is, but we will work on it. So you are right. That's not well, a guess. I'm you just are telling you because, you know, the first thing you might tell people is restart freaking NVDA if they're having problems with their maps or their coding. That's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing in the learner group as well. So it, is it just happened to Leslie just a few minutes ago, too. So well, uh, I, I will say this. If uh, you start Quorum Studio and it says, because um, I actually have per, um, progress bar percentages turned off and that the... Uh, the Quorum Studio, uh, you know, library for accessibility overwrites that, and it will uh, give progress updates uh, when when uh, when Quorum is loading. And if it if it does that, and we, you know, you don't have to restart NVDA. It usually, will read uh, oh. when you uh, when you have when that's on, when it says when it gives you progress. Really. Updates. Yeah. Dude, William, I wonder if we should check the uh, the progress UIA property, see if it's been loaded into the NVDA yet. It's possible. Like that that would totally make sense if that was the case, because some of those progress bars do that. Yeah. Oh, dude, we should check that. We'll check that later this afternoon. That's amazing. Thank you, Josh. I would not have guessed that that would have been the case. That would be that will be easy for us to check. Hmm. Interesting. See, this is the other advantage of having a, a bunch of people in the room. They all try different settings. They're like, No, I tried this. I tried this. And then maybe that maybe that gives it. That's brilliant. Thank you, Josh. Well, I, it, it I, also says, you know, like, you know, <laughs> something like watching stand up robots or something like, you know, it, it like little funny <laughs> clips like that. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, there's trolling internet trolls. Uh, sometimes you'll get ironing baby Yoda if you're if you're lucky. He has wrinkles, you know, it's not me. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay, so to uh, talk about the schedule for the rest of today. The next session is at one o'clock, so that's in an hour. And that is going to be run by uh, Gina Fugate and uh, Tim Lockwood. And they're going to be talking about um, Lego robots or also just uh, giving help if people need it. But also Lego robots is the topic of discussion. And then uh, tonight at five o'clock, which is in five hours from now. Oops, I'm sorry. I have that totally wrong. Four o'clock in four hours from now is the next social session, which is going to be run by Sarah Larkin and Sina Baram. Um, and that is two drinkies minimum. Now, of course, you know, they get increasingly misspelled as the days go on, as they should, given that you're um, all programming. 
Uh, but we don't really require that you drink alcohol because how could we? That makes no sense. Uh, but nonetheless, if you want to bring some water, or you want to bring, uh, you know, a vodka tonic or something, that's fine too. Whatever, whatever works for you is, of course, fine. But that's the social session. I will say last night, uh, kudos to Sam Shaw. I think he did a great job. I think we all had quite a, quite a good time. We can't be together, unfortunately, but uh, it still has been a blast being able to kind of uh, hang out with all of you. So I still appreciate it, even though um, it's not Corona perfect, if you will. So. Okay, so uh, any last questions before we jump off? So the link for the afternoon, is that in the uh, slate? I, I, I mean, Slack? Slack? It is, but I'll put it into the general channel as well, just so that everybody has it. Thanks. It should be on the schedule as well. It oh, is. okay. I didn't think about checking that. Thank you for the idea. Yeah, yep. it is also in the schedule as well. And then the and Zoom link. The Zoom Tim link. and Gina, I plan on coming over and if people want to do a breakout room for help or whatever before or after robots, that's fine. Yep. Okay. You know, uh, Dr. Steffick, it might not be Corona perfect, but a lot of us who wouldn't have been able to attend can do so now. So absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and I want to I want to highlight as well. Uh, Earl Huff just put something in the chat. Uh, Earl is a PhD student, and he really really needs people that are willing to talk to him as part of his research. And so one of the benefits of him coming is that he can meet all of you. But I will just give a shout out to Earl if you're willing to try to help the research community better understand the needs of you and your students. Be if you are willing, toss. To Earl a message and tell him that you're willing to to talk to him. Earl's a super nice guy. I've talked to him before. He he only bites if you're a chocolate chip cookie. I've heard so. Um, but no, it would really do the research community is solid to talk to people like Earl because he he just wants to help the community. And so if you're willing, uh, uh, a shout out to Earl. To I did the interview with him. It's not too bad. He doesn't ask for like your blood type or anything like that. You know, it's pretty it's pretty laid back. You're good. <laughs> until, you, until you fall asleep, then he gets your blood. What, what's his research topic? Um, I actually don't remember what this particular one is about. I think he says CS teachers interview interest. Uh, I don't remember. He's done topic. He's done it on a couple topics, but I I forget what this particular one's about. I think this current a, one is like how you uh, are using CS in your classroom and barriers and that kind of thing. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm totally willing. He put a blurb in the general in Slack. I'm conducting research focused on understanding the learning proficiencies and challenges of high school students with visual impairments and programming courses. I'm looking for teachers who have taught or are currently teaching computer science or programming classes to blind or visually impaired high school students to participate in an interview uh, about their teaching experiences in such courses. There you are. Yeah. He does ask also that if you're interested to particularly email him with a, the subject line, CS teachers interview interest. I imagine it's a lot easier for him to organize times. And, uh, you know, if a, if a bunch of people all come up and say, like, right now, hey, I'm interested, then that's probably useful for him. But probably it's easier if he has everyone in an organized fashion so he can get to people one at a time. That makes sense. But I, but I also know that he's a PhD student. And that's so, like, if he gets it in any mechanism possible, people <laughs> willing, he will make it happen. So, um in any case, it's just a it's just a, a shout out for Earl uh, to try to to try to try to get people. So I appreciate it. But I know all of you are probably like, oh my brain. So why don't we take a break and then uh, uh, Gina and Tim will be back in an hour, and you're welcome to come uh, bombard them. And then four o'clock, the totally optional but should be fun uh, session. I have no idea what Sarah or uh, Cena have a plan. So. Um, Good luck. Peace out. See y'all tomorrow if I don't see you tonight. Uh, before we shut this down, real quick, uh, Andy, um, if I wanted to like get into a room to help someone real quick, would be the easiest way for me to do that? Like, I assume I shouldn't break out room out of this because we're probably closing this, right? Yeah, well, I will be uh, closing it because I need to render the recording. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, we'll convert to MP4. But, uh, but I don't know, you can do that now, or you can jump them on Slack and like uh, call them that way. Uh, yeah, okay. If that works? Yeah, I'm just looking at the support channel, so I'm gonna, I'll figure it out. Yeah, uh, well, that's fine. Or I can set up another Zoom for you to do it, too. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind doing that real quick, that would be convenient. OK. Uh, all right. Who? Uh, what's the? It's uh, it's Leslie Wheelbacher. She's still on the Me. channel here. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, Leslie, what if he calls you on Slack? Is that OK? Or no, yeah, sure. you can just share screen. That's your whole point, right? Yeah. I tell you what, dude, I'll just leave the Zoom on. And just you guys okay. can feel and do it here. That's probably okay. I'll just cut my video off and mic off. But go ahead. Just stay on. OK, thank you. Thanks. No problem. So yeah, what I, I see that you've got um, an error here. And I don't think I've seen it before. Can you uh, share your screen and maybe show me what's going yes. on? Yes, let me reopen Quorum. Um, so I think you had suggested earlier that if I keep having a lot of issues, I should re-download. So I did that. Yeah. And then I needed to re-download the patch. So I was trying to do that, and I keep getting this error message. Interesting. Um, and it's thinking about it. OK. So yeah, and NVDA is not reading anything. Let me turn it off and turn it back on, see yeah. if that works. Do, 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 do. No, still not working. <sighs> um, when, when does that error appear? Does it appear when you launch Quorum Studio or is something? No, else? when I try to download the patch. Uh, that's Let's actually see. really interesting to know. OK. I think Let's that um, if, if the concern is that you're trying to get the patch and that's uh, forbidden for some reason, um, if you uh, uninstall Quorum Studio and you download it fresh from our website, this should be the most up-to-date version that's available on the website. Um, okay, I know that, that's obviously I did a hassle, just do that. but you did just do that? Okay, when you launch no, Quorum Studio. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. Sorry, that's let me. I, that's what I just did. Okay, when you launch Quorum, that, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to ask, when you launch Quorum Studio, what does it say? Does it say it's Quorum Studio 2.0.0 or is it 2.0.1? Um, it says 2.0.0. Okay. Then, yeah, we need to get you the updated version. Uh, let me da double check the download link. The download link on the Quorum webpage should take you to 2.0.1. Yeah. It does? That, yeah. Just did just, that, like, when did you do that? Know. Like an hour ago. Oh, weird. Then, yeah, that should definitely have been. Um, All right. I wonder if I could send you the Let's installer. It's, uh, it looks like it's too large to send over Slack. OK. I'm, well, first, I'm going to go. Yeah. When you um, installed it, um, did you install it while you already had a previous Quorum Studio installation on the machine? Yes. So I yeah I uh, de uh, uninstalled that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to think through what might have happened. Um, Is it possible uh, that the old installer was still there and showed up first in the list and was uh, selected? That's possible. Yeah. Uh, that is possible. Um, let me try.
something else I noticed yesterday, actually, mm -hmm. that I was going to mention to you, William. It might be good to add installer to the name of the file to differentiate yeah. it from the actual Quorum Studio. I've That's a good idea. For the app. I was having that issue yesterday. Uh, I had to read the, the Quorum Studio just says Quorum Studio and the right. installer has the, yeah. Yeah, that actually, that makes a lot of sense. It's a good uh, suggestion. Let me that Hmm. You know, it does have all the, it does have the project that was on the old version. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can, what if I go in here? Uh, okay. That's not what I thought it was. Yeah. Would it be possible for you to share your screen? Yeah. Um, sorry, I have Zoom on my phone. Oh, um, I gotcha. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go. Yeah. In that case, um, I, th I think that Tim's idea makes a lot of sense. Uh, do you know where your installer is? Um, when so if you I download just it, you, yeah, if you downloaded it earlier today, then it should be the 2.0.1 installer. So let me, let me try just typing that. Let's see. Sure. Okay, no, it says 2.0.0. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Sam. Oh, might help if I uh, turn my video on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is appreciated, yeah. <laughs> But I have all these older files. Um, maybe I didn't uninstall it all the way. Uh, it's possible, although or you I, shouldn't uh, only have to. Um, although it might be worth trying just to, because something's clearly going on with the installation here. Um, I originally had some issues just with my antivirus program interfering with it, oh, and yeah. I had to go and it was just like this big long. Uh, okay, so what do I want to do then? Um, yeah, so if the installer seems to be from 2.0.0, which is kind of strange, but um, that that's clearly not correct. Um, I would start by uninstall Quorum Studio, and we'll just try and do a, a completely fresh installation. Um, I would okay. uninstall Quorum Studio, and then I would go get the, the installer again. I know that you just got it, but it's it's strange that it's okay. not what it should be. So I will do that. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to stay on the line okay. while you do that, or if you'd rather not, then that's fine too. Change or remove. There we go. Uh, what am I looking for? Q. Yeah. If Q doesn't get you there, then the QUO usually does. It's not not many QUO nope. things on a on a system. Nope. <laughs> that is convenient. Okay. Uh, 
uninstall. Okay. All right. It's doing its little dance. Okay, good. And do you have Quorum Studio still open, by the way? Uh, you just want to make sure it's closed when you're doing little. the installation. Oh, I gotta remember. I think I closed it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see it in the okay in the bar. Okay, complete uninstall was completed. Select okay. So, co All right, so I'm gonna go yeah, quorumlanguage.com. Go to the download. Quorum. thinking about it. It's all good. I'm sure the fact that you're on Zoom makes the internet just a little bit slower than it would be otherwise. It has to compete for resources. Uh, yeah. I, my, my internet could be better. There it is. Oh. I, I know what it is. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Windows environment. Yep. Done. And, okay. So the very first thing we're going to do once that's downloaded is just make sure that the installer has the name that we expect. Okay. Uh, oh, I have to hit the run or save. Oh, oh where'd you go? Run, go. And in the installer, okay. does it tell you uh, what it is in terms of the version number? Oh, uh, actually, it, it might. Ah, it said dot one. Okay, good. Yep. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and go through the installation and just make sure that it's doing what it should be for you. But I think this should get past, get you past the issue you were having. It looked like what was going on was it was the updater was trying to run the new installer for you and it was forbidden from doing so from the system for some reason for, looked like systems permissions issue but is this like a um oh that like a school computer or like something with a, a business or like a corporation like a account or something no Actually. but the no but it does have a weird antivirus software on it yeah we had to add it to the exception list yesterday oh gotcha so pro you'll yeah. probably have to do that every time i'm guessing the check updates goes and gets an installer and then runs that yeah it does okay so maybe do you know where is it just a standard download that it takes it to or is it going into a quorum folder somewhere uh with what we've just done right now it's just you know from wherever downloads go but normally it goes in the uh roaming app data i believe when it does the uh, auto update. I wonder if that's something where we need to add an exception for like a regex of the name inside the roaming so that the check yeah, updates I'm works. Not sure. All of this stuff is um, a real hassle. <laughs> yeah, it's really individual to the computer, which is kind of rough. Yeah. This is another, uh, another reason why we should uh, get signing on this stuff so that it's a little more obvious to people that we're reputable and that they don't need to sick their antivirus on us. Yeah, and that's what it kept saying. This publisher is not commonly used. Yeah. It may harm your computer. I tried just jumping through, no allow anyway, and then I yeah. went through another way. Yeah. Well, your antivirus is determined. I was like, no, this is an untrustworthy scumbag. 
They're gonna destroy your computer. Yes. Oh, this is going to take forever. Um, why don't I, <laughs> why don't I uh, message you in Slack when I get, when it comes? Sure. It's only at 15%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me know if it works or if it doesn't work. Either way, I'm happy to, I'm happy to know success and I'm happy to help if it doesn't, so. Okay, I, I appreciate you guys helping me problem solve this. Yep, of course. <laughs> Yeah, All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think we're done with the Zoom call. So, well, thanks, Epic. Yeah, no worries. All right, bye. Yeah. Bye. See you later.